What's up guys? Welcome back to the Team Swim Circus Live video. Today we actually have a one new deck on the channel here on the right side. This is going to be Ice Berries, the deck that you guys saw yesterday on the deck profile. Shout out to Todd for playing this. And we're seeing purely on the left, uh, you know, Brian playing this for the regionals as well. I think this is the exact same list that has topped the regionals. Uh, shout out to Alex as well for that. Um, but yeah, before we dive into the like, comment, subscribe, we are going to be trying to get a little bit more... Uh, we're going to be seeing Ice Barrier today, uh, and then if you guys stick around for later, we are going to be doing a combo video on that later as well. There's like four combos. This card, this deck has a plus four draw combo, by the way, all off one card. I guess you can have a discard as well for a little bit of an optimized. And then once you start putting in the, five, the four other cards in your hand, you're going to be having a, a bunch of other options that you can play. Um... We are going to be seeing Infernoids as going to be on the channel next week as well. Uh, Ritual Beast is being played, but unfortunately I haven't been able to get that on camera yet. Uh, but I hope you guys do enjoy watching the video. We are trying very hard to get those new decks. We are going to be seeing the Purely Player. going to be starting off, you know, before we do dive right on in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Shout out a lot. We're on the trial road to hit 10k subscribers by the end of the year here. We are going to be seeing the pretty going to be something like a copy of pure lily and we're going to activate that we do hit that with a copy of ash blossom this is going to be so that we don't have a way to kind of get to my friend um they will be able to have a pretty here uh, which is going to be a or a beauty in this case a lily targeting the copy of the pretty to make a beauty uh, but stopping it so that we can't have access to that my friend to get that continuous resource loop uh, is can be quite nice now if they already had it in the hand it would have been kind of unfortunate we do see the streak going to be able to attach that sleepy getting them a draw one during the next standby phase uh, but it's still very impactful and we did already have that second copy of um a uh whatever a dream or whatever their memory there so we would have been able to kind of play through it if we would have let them search, but we're going to be seeing a revealer activating its effects. Then we're going to be discarding a copy of Mage. Mirror Mage will then be able to trigger searching for any copy of an Ice Barrier. We did see the Beauty negate the revealer there, which would have then summoned out a copy of the either the Gorgeous or a copy of the um, Hexia. We're going to be searching for the General Wade here, which can let us special summon out a monster, which is actually really good against, or special summon itself out. And its Flygate effect is really good against the copy of Purely, because it's going to let every spell they have essentially get banished. So they're not going to be able to add anything off the, um, the My Friend back if we do had it on, if we had it on the field, um, or even have Pure Lily. But we're going to be seeing the Gorge is going to activate summon out itself, plus the Mirror Mage in the Graveyard, and we can go up into a copy of the Lancia. Lancia is going to most likely be in the extra Monster Zone, because that's really where you want it in this combo here, um, to free up the space. You know, if we did see the Revealer kind of go through, we would have been able to actually, you know, link up or be able to tribute some stuff to get the token. But we are going to be going into, or we are going to be able to continue, because we do have the Wage, or the Wayne anyways, um, so we can go special summon that out, which it can be tributed off at any point for those three tokens with the mirror mage effect. Kind of crazy. And then we can actually just go up into a copy of, um, and we have, we have options. We have coral dragon, which can pop the street and then ravenous, which can let us draw four with the, with the copy of, um, coral dragon, um, Leaving them essentially on just the cards in the hand. But we're going to be searching for Medallion first. Searching for a copy of the Squeaky. I guess we do need access to that additional token there. We're going to be seeing the effect of the Coral Dragon. Sending the copy of Squeaky then pop that uh, copy of Street. Then we're going to be seeing the Squeaky Banished summon out another copy, or the Squeaker, whatever you want to call it. They go up into a copy of Ravenous Croc. Ravenous Croc and then Coral Dragon, Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, letting us draw four cards, and our opponent's going to admit defeat there, knowing damn well that once you start drawing four cards, the game is over. Uh, Purely knows that very well. Um, you know, having those hand traps in the deck also can be beneficial, you know, drawing into a hand trap and then being able to like, just stop the stuff. This deck reminds me a lot of Sword Soul, um, where you've summoned out your level 8s and your level 10s quite easily. Uh, and they are both water. I think that they can be also merged together a little bit as well. I definitely don't recommend that, you know, maybe some of the ice barriers grow worms, um, but unfortunately that's just not going to be it. Uh, and that's going to be game one. We did see purely kind of, kind of get screwed up by just one ash blossom they could have played a little bit more 
if they wanted to by summoning a copy of Purely uh, by discarding the Ash off their Delicious um, to then hopefully maybe hit Upgrade Up. Uh, but at that point, it's just like, well, you know, what are you really trying to upgrade into? It, you have to really like pray you hit something really good. Um, at that point, it's just kind of worth having a follow-up. Summon out another copy of Pure Lily, and then Pure Lily will be able to search for your my friend, my friend Pay, and then be able to get those stuff. But it just was not enough because we would have been able to clear. And whenever we special summon, we're going to be having Floodgated. Um, so diving on into game two with the purely player, choose and go first. Once again, we see a few hand traps. This can actually defeat the ice barrier quite easily. Uh, but my friend or purely is going to be activating here. And then it's going to be hitting the top three. And we see a sleepy, sleepy, and a happiness. Well, I'd be pretty happy to see that. But we do choose a sleepy, which can now go up into the baby noir here. We're going to be seeing a part of prosperity. You know, this is going to allow us to kind of choose our combo wisely. And then we do banish six. We do see a my friend as well as a yeep cross out delicious. Um, we are going to be adding, I believe, a copy of delicious there. Or that was a street. We do see the street being activated there, and then we're going to be activating the effect of uh, Sleepy, sending another copy of Purely to summon out a copy of Pure Lila here. Most likely going to be searching for a My Friend. You know, it cannot be Imperm, which is quite nice. Which we then activate. My Friend is going to let us have, essentially, um, insane follow-up by just paying 500. But we do have the copy of Ghost Ogre. Talk about a punish. Pure Lila was going to have to the effect targeting the copy of Sleepy to go up into a Baby Noir. Do we have another? We do. We have the Delicious, which we can then chain the copy of Pure Lila or the Purely Noir, which can then set the trap here, letting us have access to a big Noir, um, which is going to be ineffective when it gets smashed on the field because it will have five material. Uh, we're going to set a card here, and then we're going to be activating the effect of the Street during the end phase, attaching a second copy of Sleepy, letting us draw four here. So we're going to draw for turn. And then now we have access to a draw two off the copy of Baby Noir. Which we do draw into an Imperm. Very unfortunate. We're then going to activate the Yeep to go up into a copy of the Big Noir. Unaffected, by the way, and drawing two more additional cards. We do see an Ash in the hand as well. And now both players have drawn four cards here, which is kind of crazy. You know, turn zero, or turn one, I guess, of both turns, we have seen a draw four. Uh, that's kind of crazy. But will the player who draw four just win the game here is the question. We're going to be seeing the Ice Jade card being activated sending a floodgate guy this is normally not one of the bodies you want to summon uh, you want to have it in the deck so you can summon it off the copy of lancia here um, but we are going to be able to discard it off the ice jade card and then we can go up right into a, either a lancia or it may be a changing depending on what we really need uh, but we're going up into the ice jade argo or whatever ymir which is kind of like a at home baron if you wish we're going to then activate the Medallion, and we do have the copy of Ash Blossom. This card is not once per turn, though, so if we have another copy, we will see it activated. Um, but definitely a good Ash. It looks like we also have a copy of the, whatever, the, uh, the Winds over the Ice Barrier, which is not going to be a good card. Um, when you open up a copy of Ryao as well as the, um, the Wind, it's like, that's very unfortunate. Uh, but we're going to be setting a card and just beating over the purely and that's going to be it they're going to be going noir here to shuffle back and we do chain the copy of ymir we chain a copy of imperm on it and we're just going to be seeing them admit defeat here uh right away yeah so we see a draw four equals game uh, kind of hard to believe that in a game of 40 cards in your deck if you draw 10 percent of those cards uh you're going to be winning that duel on turn one i mean Potter Greed twice is low-key crazy. Like, I, I couldn't even imagine if I was playing back in the day. Um, and like, Potter Greed was, like, one of the best cards in the, day, in the game. And then for all of a sudden, you know, we have two decks that are playing each other with a draw forward. Be like, what the hell is going on here? 
you know, just one copy of Street could equal a pot of greed, which is low-key crazy. But we are going to be seeing a judge call from Todd and then returning to the field um, in the time of siding, which is quite fine. You know, the games do go fairly quick, especially when both players do their combo. You know, this is no Snake Eyes combo taking 20 minutes for a turn. Um, that's, like, so crazy. You know, people are like, oh, yeah, you talk... A lot of people t always tell me, oh, you play Branded. What are you talking about Snake Eyes? So with Branded is that you have almost one line that you can interact with. Like if you hate Gimmick Puppet, just stop the Gimmick Puppet. Play DD Crows. Play Bistules. You know, you have lines to stop it. With Snake Eyes, there's like 17 points of interaction. And it's like every single one of these cards gets just so much stuff for them. Like one Snake Eyes Ash does not compare to one Branded Fusion. Um, you know, Snake Eyes Ash is an insane card the deck is able to make insane boards by playing four hand traps compared to branded which essentially just uses those cards in the hand which both these decks actually kind of compare to a lot where their engine do have one card combos uh, i guess purely doesn't really have any combos but once you start adding those additional cards into the hand you're going to be able to change your lines up to make bigger and better boards now with snake eyes on the other hand you know all of their cards can essentially just accomplish the exact same thing. Snake Eyes, Ash, and Die Star are those two cards that if you have those two cards plus three other hand traps, it does not matter what other cards are in your hand. You're going to have your best board. To me, when you have those cards that like no matter what you add, like even Melodious, Melodious' end board doesn't really change that much depending on what you have in their hand. So like you want to be seeing those two hand traps or three hand traps and those two engine cards, uh, which are going to be like, maximizing your chance of winning by having a better board but we're going to be seeing a revealer being normal summon act of inspect sending a copy of ash to the hand which means that we either have a double copies of ash or we have a lots of uh a lots of good extenders here we have an ogre in the hand as well which can definitely hit the my friend we see a summon out of mage here you know normally you go for the hexia hexia dump the mage but we're going to be going right into the copy of uh, the lancia I guess that must have been gorgeous there that we summoned instead. I feel like we definitely should have gone for the Hexia. Hexia dump the copy of the Mirror Mage. Um, but we're going to be seeing a Proud of Prosperity there. Maybe only having the cards in the hand for hand traps. Uh, we do see a Proud of Prosperity adding the copy of Dark Ruler no more. Which is definitely going to stop the Lancia there. Other than its graveyard effect, when it's its destroy, which it most likely will not be doing, it's going to be attached to the copy of the purely there. But we do see a draw and resolution, and we see a pretty activating its effect, sending the copy of Ghost Ogre, summoning with a copy of Pure Lili. And then we're going to be seeing the Pure Lili effect, or Pure Lili effect, is going to activate there. Um, and we do have the copy of Ghost Ogre here. You know, we're not going to be able to add, so we can activate the effect to target in the graveyard, summon with a copy of Beauty. And that's going to be huge. They have to check their side deck. If they have a copy of Ogre left in their deck, they do not. They only had the one for the cross out. That is crazy. Unfortunate there for them. So they purely is going to die. Not the greatest, to be honest. Like, you know, that's what the problem with the cross out is. I find a lot of the times you have to lead double of those cards in for when you want to stop it. And they do just pass turn on this. We do see a Valor in the hand as well, so you know they will be able to kind of uh, interact with their opponent, uh, but they're going to be able to just go battle phase, attack, and just passing turn on that. They have a Ghost Ogre, or they have a Droll and an Ash in the hand as well. We do see the Sleepy Memory going to activate here, and this is going to make it so that their damage is going to be half, and do we Ash this to stop that pure Lili, or purely? Most likely not, making them force to discard a card. We're going to be discarding a copy of the Baylor. Summon out a copy of Pure Lily. Pure Lily effects going to activate there, and we are going to be chaining the Lancia. The summon out from the deck. And so, like, here, if we summon out a copy of Ryo, um, our opponent's going to have to discard a card to activate the Pure Lily effect there. But we're going to be choosing a Wade here instead. So Wade's effect is going to be able to activate, like I mentioned in game two, I believe, uh, where Wade's going to make it so that all the spell cards we activate are going to get banished. It's not going to do that much because of the fact that 
you know, we are kind of already ahead. We have Sleepy in the graveyard already. Um, but it's still going to be able to kind of a bit, you know, making them play carefully at this point. Um, we're going to go Pure Lily Effect, you know, we're going up into a copy of the Beauty. Okay. And then we're going to activate the effect of the Lancia once again. Now we are in a really weird spot because we do need that follow up. We have activated Droll on the resolution of the Pure Lila or Pure Lily, adding the copy of My Friend. So My Friend's kind of offline. Um, but like, what do we choose to summon? We can go for a Gorge because I'm not a copy of Revealer, essentially guaranteeing us some follow up. We could go for Mage as well. Um, but if Mage is sent to the graveyard this turn, which it should because of, you know, the the opponent should read the card and realize like, okay, well it needs to add, um, like you don't have anything banished. Therefore you can't add off droll cause droll affects both players. So we're going to be seeing them set a copy of the cross out. And then we're going to be seeing the pure, pure, the beauty effects can activate, which can then be able to attach that copy of Lancia. This is going to make it so that that effect cannot activate, which is like, but purely kind of has a good advantage on the ice barriers. At this point, you know, both decks actually have a good um, a good matchup against each other. I, I think that also the crossout is supposed to be banished because of the Wade. Yeah, so it's supposed to be banished because of the Wade there. Um, but we will see... A big thing here. I mean, they definitely just go battle phase attack over it. They could even make a Zeus if they wanted to. But we're going to choose to activate my friend. We are in the droll, so it's not going to make that much of a difference. I guess if the beauty gets destroyed, we will get a effect, but. We're going to go attacking into that copy. And Mage will not be able to trigger, unfortunately, because we are under Droll. But we are going to resolve it anyways here. I guess we just search for a Medallion. See if we can have any random piece. Yeah, we definitely we can't. We, we are not supposed to resolve that. I hope it doesn't change kind of the outcome of the game. Being able to search for any monster that you want is pretty crazy, though. Um, we're search for a Medallion there. Uh, they set one card and just pass on this, which we do draw for turn. We see a swap frog in the hand, so if we just don't pretend we have the medallion, um, I want to see where that's going. But it looks like we're just going to be activating the medallion right away, searching for a copy of mage. Uh, so that's definitely is going to be impactful to the game. We're going to be seeing swap frog send the mage to summon itself out. Then we're going to activate both the effects here to dump, uh, which is why swap frog is you know being played. This card's actually really good. Um, you can even actually summon out the uh the copy of swap frog with the um whatever his name is the copy of totally awesome which can then like detach for a mage so you can have multiple turns of the effects of mage uh, but we see the gorgeous going to be searched here which can then be able to activate the effect bringing itself alongside a most likely a revealer out um Or the mage you know mage is a good card to uh, to be able to activate effects to tribute but we're going to be seeing the swap frog activate to bounce and they do chain a copy of d barrier on this calling synchro and it's going to be kind of hard for the deck to kind of combat this we're going to be seeing general weights by summon itself out and we're going to be able to activate its effects to it has an effect what the heck You add a spell and trap. Okay, that's pretty nice. Being able to add the the uh, the copy of freezing chains can be very good. I mean, you can also go winds over ice barrier. Uh, it's just not going to like summon out enough, I guess. Now we have coral and enemy that can beat over the beauty. Uh, we can go for a toad. Toad can also beat over the beauty as well. And we're going to be seeing them summon out the copy of the mirror. And 
and then they're going to attack into the beauty. Beauty is going to die. Now, my friend's going to activate tempting to take, uh, but they do, they, they, they negated the effect of weight, I should say. Um, but Toad's going to be negating that by sending the copy of the, uh, the mage to the graveyard here. And then we're still going to see them scoop uh, with the Ice Dragon or Ice Barrier player end up winning the duel. Unfortunately, that misplay definitely cost a purely player of the game. It is up to both players to remember the card effects that was activated, unfortunately. But that search for the medallion definitely turned the tide of the game, uh, if you wish. Definitely froze that purely player over. But regardless, hope you guys watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to see more content like this. Stay safe. Peace.